thank you, Serge, for this nice introduction. And uh, good morning to all here in the amphitheater, and especially to the delegates and the chairs of the council and governing boards of Oro HPC and praise. I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to present you this morning uh, the Oro European HPC ecosystem, once upon a time in Europe. I think uh, if you want to understand the present and especially the future, you have to understand also the past, and this I will try in, in my presentation. This is a work which I did not do by myself alone. It's an activity we started some years ago, actually triggered by the European Commission. And we have a nice group of people from around Europe helping yeah, to, to think about, to investigate, to, to ask uh, the stakeholders. So it's uh, Stelios from Cyprus, Janina and Veronica from Jülich, Jean-Philippe Nominet from uh, Paris, and, and Oriol from Barcelona, and Philippe also from Paris. So what I, I tell you, you can blame me, but uh, the, the work uh, uh, which is behind uh, is uh, due to, to this group of people. So and before I start, I need to give you a disclaimer. When I was uh, young, so 40 years ago in school, I liked very much technical drawing. Yeah? You, at this time, you, we had already computer, but they were not accessible. And we had to do the drawing with pencil and ink. And it was quite a challenge because if you did something wrong with the ink, you could basically restart from scratch. There was a way to remove the ink with a sharp knife in a way, but it never disappeared. So um, here is one of, of the example. It's an easy one. The others uh, are more complicated. So uh, I've chosen an easy one. And I want to show you that this is a, a front view, a side view, and a top view of a body. And I want to draw your attention that each of the views looks different. So this is a front view, this is a side view, and this is a top view. And I dare to ask if someone knows or can Think about what this is a kind of a body. Hmm. No. Well, <laughs> it's a hexagonal prism with some modification on the top. So now you will ask why I show you this uh, strange example. I think it's very much related to the European HPC ecosystem. It depends on the point of view and you have a different picture. But it describes the very much the same body, the ecosystem. But the ecosystem is a little bit more complicated because there's not only three dimensions. At least there is the fourth one, which is the time. So now let's have a look to the ecosystem. So this is the word, word cloud. I created, so you can blame me if the sizes of different initiatives and projects and organizations which are displayed are not correct. But you see, regardless of size, it's a lot. We have a lot of initiatives, organizations in Europe which may make the, the European HPC ecosystem. So let's start from a little bit the past. As Janne already mentioned, the precursor for praise was Dyser, and the activity started around 2002, and it was a sort of preparing the petascale area. And it was uh, on a small scale a program to exchange cycles between partners from peer to peer. And the diversity of the architecture in the different countries was the reason why this exchange was useful and needed. But since it was a, a small amount of cycles and the 
growing um, investments in, in high performance computing and the different system, this uh, system did not uh, scale up. And there was a need to pool top level world class systems and of course the services around. And then 2010 PRAISE was founded, it was the 23rd April. And PRAISE stands for Partnership, so for Advanced Computing in Europe. And we have a, we work in, in a tier uh, pyramid um, model with tier zero systems from seven systems from five and later uh, four and later five hosting members. But we also uh, provide tier one resources via the DISA exchange um, of cycle program DICI, which is an overtaking from DISA. And for all of them, tier one and tier zero, there is a portfolio of activities through the PRAISE implementation phase projects to, uh, to support uh, this activity. So this ecosystem getting more and more complicated and we structured it in three pillars. So we have uh, the technology pillars where we have uh, all which is uh, related to HPC technology, the infrastructure pillar and the applications pillar. I will go now through these pillars and uh, give you a little bit more detail. So the infrastructure pillars, um, there we group Praise and Gion. Gion is a network provider, but not only as the network provider, but also a provider of high level services for uh, identification uh, and uh, auto authorization and so on. And Phoenix as a federated research infrastructure providing access to data and HPC infrastructure which grow up from the human brain project and is a, yeah, the basis for a federated research infrastructure. If we move to the applications pillar, we have Focus CUE. I will tell you a little bit more about this, which is a coordination action. And then the European Commission started to fund the competence centers. And the competence centers are uh, there for developing and improving application of a certain scientific domain and make them ready for exascale. But this uh, center of excellence, are, there were several calls and some did not manage to get the continuous funding and new center of excellence came. And not all scientific communities are covered by these center of excellences. Okay, Focus COE is, as I said, a concerted action for the European HPC center of excellences coordinated by SCAPOS in Germany. And uh, they initiate the HPC COE Council comprising all uh, HPC COEs aiming at strengthening the role of application in the European HPC ecosystem. And of course, Focus COE is uh, supporting the operation of HPC3. And there's also a collaboration with other players, Castile, OCC, and the Petascale and Pre-Exascale Consortia. And they also uh, support the Center of Excellence by organizing various event events like training. And PRAISE is one of the 11 partners of Focus UE. I mentioned this in order to show that these initiatives and organizations are not isolated, but there are always interactions between them. So in the technology uh, pillar, we have the future emerging technology projects grouped in core technologies and exascale hardware and software, building blocks working on software, energy efficiency, and so on, towards uh, uh, exascale. And there, there are a lot. There's also the, uh, the ETP for HPC, the European Technology Platform for High Performance Computing, and in order to show you this, uh, there are more than 100 uh, members working on uh, the HPC uh, technical uh, technology aspects 
and developing the strategic research agenda. So, and then we come to OROHPC joint undertaking, which was uh, uh, created 2018, but really started in 2019. And uh, this uh, was a change in the, in the ecosystem, a real change. But I think it's also a chance, because with OROHPC joint undertaking, a lot of additional funding were made available to the European HPC ecosystem. This is reflected by the procurement of the different systems we heard already and other activities. So this is based on two EU Council regulations from 2018 and the latest 2021. I will not tell you the numbers because I don't know the numbers. <laughs> So if you want to know them, you can ask uh, Anders and Josephine. <laughs> so, and the object is very roughly and, and global is uh, build and operate a world-class integrated HPC and data infrastructure, enabling the member states to improve their HPC competency, foster HPC skills, education, training, and develop HPC core technology, which seems in these times is specifically important. This is addressed in the European Processor Initiative, Energy Efficient HPC and Quantum Computing. So, also our view to the ecosystem changed with Euro HPC from the three pillars. It was transformed to five pillars, two additional pillars, widening users and skills and federation of supercomputing services were mentioned in the regulation of the Council. And now I will do the same, I will go through the different pillars and tell you a little bit something around. So I will address mainly the changes, of course. So in the infrastructure pillar, we have the huge and great addition of the HPC systems co-funded by Euro HPC joint undertaking. This is very clear. Then in the technology pillar, we have uh, Euro HPC pilots plus the quantum computing uh, projects, which are new and will uh, help develop to get Europe in, in, in front of the development. Then in the applications, there we have still the center of excellence and the new call for Euro HPC work plan 2022 and also other projects which address the application, for instance, a new algorithm for application on EU exascale supercomputers. Here, I will address now the additional adds on to the ecosystem. So the, here, the Federation of Supercomputing Services, there is included the high-level support teams for ROHPC systems, a call which uh, will come and will help to support the different uh, systems funded or co-funded by OROHPC joint undertaking and also an activity and to support the federation of supercomputing and data resources. I put beside the Phoenix because I think they could be uh, the model for this federation of the supercomputing. Then we have uh, widening usage and skills with uh, the HPC competence centers. This is a real addition, and I will explain it uh, uh, in a minute, uh, a little bit more in detail, with ROCC and Castile, which is uh, the coordination activity. There are also projects planned in the uh, work plan 2022, addressing a user forum project, training activities, and networking and coordination of national HPC competence centers and centers of excellence. So this coordination activity uh, focus COE will move to a joint uh, uh, collaboration support action for the NCC and COEs. So now, the national competence centers. They are the central points of contact for HPC and related technologies in their countries. 
and they are funded by the OUCC project with 33 members and coordinated by Höchstleistungsrechenzentrum Stuttgart. And um, this serve to establish the NCCs and the participating countries, and they are responsible for surveying and documenting the core HPC, HPDA, and AI activities and competencies in their respective countries. And as I said, they're coordinated by Castile, which uh, provides a network between the different competence centers and yeah, ele um, elevate the participant countries to a common high level in the field of HPC. And the overall goal, of course, is to make HPC available to the different users from science, industry, and public services and society. Though the Castile project is um, also coordinated by HLIS, and uh, of course closely associated to the to OROCC and uh, as I said provides the network between the different centers. Then there's another activity which I did not yet mention it's a uh, FF for OROHPC it's a successor for the for Fortissimi project to support um, SMEs and support OROHPC to support the industrial uptake. And this is a, um, one of these goals, is a business-oriented application experiments or pilots dry, driven by the SMEs and user needs, and also to support the national competence centers and the SMEs, and all for this to widen the industrial HPC user communities. So, I'm nearly at the end of my presentation. It should be just a short overview of uh, the existing ecosystem in Europe. This afternoon we have a workshop where we will discuss in more detail uh, the links between the different uh, stakeholders and the interactions, also the user needs, if they are addressed by the ecosystem we have for the moment. And what I did not yet cover in this introduction, so the link to the outside world, so the European Open Science Cloud, the Transcontinuum Initiative, international cooperation and competition, and industry more uh, in detail, the offer for industry, cloud offers, uh, industry involvement, and so on. And also other stakeholders like the citizen and the relationship to science and its understanding new user communities such as social science and humanities. And we want not forget diversity, equality, inclusivity, and attractivity of STEM and uh, talent shortage. In order to conclude, nah, if you are, ah, this I forgot. If you want, you're really interested in, in the ecosystem, the ETP for HPC with the support of the uh, XDCI project and now HPC Kick project, publish uh, every year a handbook, the European High Performance Computing Projects Handbook. And this lies always on my desk, where I, because I cannot, my, my brain is not so good anymore. I can't uh, memorize all the different projects. So this is a good, really good source to, to dig in and find quickly the projects and read on two pages what these projects are about and who is coordinating the project, a contact point and so on. It's really a very, very nice um, source for, of information. So, and now let me conclude. So, in my point of view, the investments in HPC in Europe are important and needed for keeping pace in the global race. And Europe must be inclusive and excellent, taking advantage of all different and diverse contribution in Europe. And people's matters the most, beside the hardware, also software, and people using and operating the HPC systems are essential to be successful. And the coordination is key in a complex ecosystem. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Florian, for this uh, overview of our, of our ecosystem that is of, our, of, of all of us uh, here in Paris uh, this week. Um, we have time for a few questions. Uh, again, in the audience, possibly. So I guess as convener, I'm in charge of asking the first question. Um, well, Florian, can, can you actually um, comment on how you see coordination? Because uh, with your experience uh, in, in as project manager of the Pre6 uh, or several IPs, um, you probably have your own view on, on, on the best way to actually coordinate initiatives. Can you share this view with, uh, with, with us? Yeah. So that's just also a very difficult question. <laughs> so, <laughs> but OK. Um, there, there is, a, in my point of view, there, there are two levels of, uh, or more levels of coordination. There is a, a coordination behind the scenes because the people know each other and we talk to each other and we align and uh, try to yeah, move on in a coherent way. But um, I think that um, there is a change in the, in the past where, where praise uh, was one project um, uh, de delivering uh, several services with training, um, uh, user support, uh, code enabling. It was uh, easy uh, to, to coordinate and to, to manage. Now with a changed uh, um, ecosystem, with uh, different activities uh, in, in Europe, in different projects, I think there is uh, still the need that these different uh, actors and uh, coordinators, because we don't know who, who it will be, so it will, will probably be different um, uh, organizations around Europe responsible for the different activities. I think it's important all that also these um, find a platform of coordination where they can align and uh, yeah, agree on a strategy how to move on and to use uh, the best synergies uh, possible in, in the ecosystem. Thank you very much, Florian. Yeah, the, the yeah, coordination is sometimes seen as, a, as, a, as a, an annoying uh, activity, but uh, our experience in press is that getting people together and share their views is usually very fruitful to, to actually align the actors and, and come up with a very sensible and good uh, uh, answer to the, to the challenges. Last time for, for a question. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Thanks. Very good. Yeah, good. I didn't want to interrupt you, uh, Florian, and it was interesting. Uh, the question is on the difference between the, uh, how we worked in Praise and how we are going to work on your HPC. Praise, it was one project. We have uh, several work packages. Uh, I'm leading the containers and uh, lightweight virtualization package in, uh, in work package six. We have the praise sites, the praise networks. If you want to implement something, we contact those sites, we have a team to work. In your HPC, there are many systems. Each system has its own consortium, its own strategic committee. And if you want to implement something, something or try out something, it's not that easy because we are not one team anymore. So the decisions has to be taken in, the, uh, in each system separately, uh, whether it is strategic committee or operational management board. So things become a bit complex. I un understand all of the advantages that you, you mentioned, but I see this complexity as slowing things down. So I would like your comment on that and how you think we can overtake uh, or overcome this complexity. Um. My comment on this would be very easy. So if it's not yet the case, I, would, I showed you a slide where I said this is a, a change, but also a chance. And I would uh, refer to this. If it's not yet uh, so that it's coordinated, it should be the ambition for the future 
to transform it in, in the way that it will be coordinated also in future. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, with this, I propose to close this morning session and let me ask you to uh, applaud. <laughs> because indeed that was a challenge and uh, uh, congratulations, Florian, I think you, you made it. Um, and so the, it's, it's time for coffee break now, so I invite you to, to join the, the, the foyer and have your coffee there uh, and enjoy uh, a networking session. Thank you very much for the session this morning.